Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the MRA part 2 that is mobile and remote access. So in the previous lecture we discussed about the few things about the mobile and remote access like a theoretical part. And in this part I am going to discuss about all the configuration on MR for MRA on Expressway Core, Expressway Edge or on the CUCN or maybe on the like a certificate request and all as well. So what are the things we needed for the MRA configuration? First thing, as you can see, that is you need to configure an AXL user on the CUCM, right? And then next one would be you need to enable MRA on both of the servers, like on the Expressway Core as well as on the Expressway Edge. You need to enable this MRA service. Then you have the next thing that is add the CUCM to the Expressway Core. As if you if you uh, checked my previous lecture, you can see you have a CUCM. It is connected only with the Expressway C. It's not connected with the Expressway Edge. So that's why we will add CUCM to the Expressway Core. So we need to do the configuration of CUCM on the Core part, but not on the Expressway Edge, right? Then we have next thing that is configure domain settings and the DNS that we will do as well. We need to add the DNS. We need to uh, add the domain settings. Then we need to request the certificates, the trusted certificates or the CA certificates. And then the last step would be the traversal zones. So we will discuss about all these steps for MRA configuration in detail, like with the slides as well as on the CUCM, Expressway Edge, Expressway Core, and the further certificates as well. So we will discuss all things in detail. So first thing, what we need to do, we need to configure AXL user on the CUCM. Okay, so let's do that. This is my CUCM, right? What you need to do to add the, uh, to add your uh, AXL user on the CUCM, you need to go to this user management and there you can find the application user. Right under this application user, you need to create one user which will be like named it as a MRA AXL user something or you can add it a new one as well and any new user as well. Like I am just using this one so that I could remember MRA AXL user. Then I need to add the passwords. Let me add the password and confirm it. Right. So here the next, the good things we need to do with user ID, we need to add then the passwords. Okay. As soon as I added the passwords, you can see we have these things as well here, groups and roles. If you don't assign any group, then this user ID or password is of no use. Right. So we need to add the uh, groups here on for this MRA AXL user. So I can I will click on this add to access control group. Okay, as soon as I add on the access control group, you can see, let me just click on find. Okay. Once this, once I click on the find, you can see there are so many access control groups which are already created by default as soon as you install the CUCM. Okay. So for this purpose, like for the AXL purpose, I need a super user, right? So I can click on this one, standard CUCM super users and click on add selected. As you can see, standard CUCM super user is coming here in the under the groups, but nothing comes here under the roles because the roles would related with the groups. So we just add the groups and the roles will add it automatically. I just need to click on save and then these roles would get added under these groups automatically. As you can see, MRA user ID is there, confirm password, password is there. And if I scroll it down, I can see this is my group which I added and these are the roles which are automatically added. And the first one you can see standard AXL API access. That means it will work like as a as a AXL user, we can use it. Then we have other things as well, CCM admin users, CU reporting and all other things as well. 
So now our first step is complete. That is, we need to add an AXL user on the CUCN, right? Okay, then next step would be to enable MRA. So where we need to enable MRA? So MRA application, MRA is not an application, I can say. MRA, the configuration, we need to do it on the Expressway Edge or on the Expressway Core. So we need to enable this on both of the servers, not on, not just like we need to do it on, on the core or on the edge. No, we need to do it on the both. So let me go to my servers. Let me log in. Okay. This is my Expressway Core, as you can see, Cisco Expressway Core. Now to enable the MRA, what I need to do? I need to go to this configuration. Then here you can see Unified Communications. Under the configuration, you have Unified Communication. And then go to this configuration. As you can see, here it is showing Unified Communications mode as off. So once you click on this drop down, you can see it is showing three services, three things of mobile and remote access and the Jabber guest services. And if we read it out here, you can see off means not support for unified communication services. If I click on this mobile and remote access, what would the purpose? It says it allows endpoints such as Cisco Jabber to have their registration, call control, messaging or all other things provided by CUCM when the endpoint is not within the network. So that is what we are discussing, mobile and remote access. Let's say your Jabber is not in within your enterprise network. That is what why we are using this mobile and remote access. Okay. And the next is Jabber guest services. It says it enables the expressway to provide a firewall traversal between Jabber guest client in the internet and the Jabber guest servers inside the enterprise. If you have Jabber guest servers inside the enterprise as well as Jabber guest client on the internet. So this Jabber guest services option provides a secure firewall between those things, Jabber guest client and the Jabber guest servers inside the enterprise. Now let me choose mobile and remote access and I, I'm not going to use any other thing and let's just click on save. Okay, this is this thing is saved, success saved, mobile and remote access. Now let me go to the my expressway edge and here I need to do the same configuration. Go to the same configuration, unified communications and then the configuration. Let me click on this one, mobile and remote access and save it. Now, can you spot the difference between this Expressway and Expressway Edge for this configuration at least? As you can see, under the configuration of Expressway Core, under this Unified Communications, you can see different options like this Unified CM Server, Assignment Presence Service Nodes, Unity Connection Servers, right? But on the Expressway Edge, you can't see these. You can see under the Unified Communications, you have just the configuration option because your call manager, your Unity, and your IMN presence is not connected with the Expressway Edge. It's just connected with your Expressway code. That is why you can see these configurations on the Expressway code, right? So now our next step would be to add the unified CM server. So let's go back to the slide. And here you can see the next step would be to add the CUCM servers, okay? This one, you need to add CUCM to your Expressway code, right? Let's do that. Now, as you can see, this is my CUCM Expressway code. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm adding CUCM. So CUCM would be get, getting added on the core. So for that, go to the configuration, unified communications and the unified CUCM servers. So once I click on that, it will open the page where I can add my CUCM servers. Yes. Click on new. Let me add my CUCM publisher IP here. And let's say let I'm adding MRA AXL user. And let's say Cisco 
and let me just do this and click add address <clears throat> okay so once it's success okay now you can see it says connection success server was successfully discovered and queried as you can see username this one okay got it and now you can see publisher address name everything is showing up here so if i am having other subscribers as well which are added even though it will also get added automatically here because we are creating a connection between the cucm and the expressway core right just like this one here we can do that and just like you can see it in this example and you have this <clears throat> uh, publisher address as well as this subscriber address is also here correct now our next step would be to add you can see the zones as well and under the zones you can find these two like publisher as well as subscriber and it will be showing created so if i can go to this configuration zones and then zone so one zone which is default it is showing created default zone but the other one it is created ucm onecloudcom and it is created the type as a neighbored zone because this is the neighbor to your cucm that's why it is created the neighbor zone here right so after that your next step would be to add the dns and the domain setting okay for that we can go to the same configuration and then you can go to domains <clears throat> okay we can i can add directly a new domain here let's say i'm adding dcloud.cisco.com my domain and i am not gonna change any setting or we can see it on the slide after this one domain uh, you can add the domain name and then you can go to the DNS thing. So domain name is added, dcloud.cisco.com, okay? Then for the DNS, go to the same, uh, go to the system and then DNS, okay? So as you can see, DNS I have already added earlier, like this is my system host name, a domain name which I created earlier, I can just add it here and this is my default DNS server. That is already there and then you can just so we like if if that is not there this dns is dns settings are not configured then you can come here and you can add the dns settings here right so now what we did so far we added the cucm uh, we created an application user mra excel user then we enabled the mra then we added our cucm on the expressway core and then we have added this default uh, not the default i can say domain name and the dns details okay so now our next step would be to add the certificates okay so for the certificates so as of now i am going to do something on the expressway core first and then i'll i'll do it on the expressway edge okay for the certificates let me come back here okay i can go so for this certificate let me delete the previous one if i'm having any okay let me delete it okay so for this one what i need to do <clears throat> i need to go to this maintenance tab then security certificates and then i have these two options server certificate and the trusted ca certificate let me go to the server certificate so first thing for the server certificate what i need to do i need to generate this csr what is csr csr is certificate signing request okay i can go click on this generate csr and here you can see it is coming up like common name and common name as it will appear right now you don't need to do anything else here like we can do this thing like key length in bits i'm gonna change it to 2048 and there are other things state locality organization and organization unit you can change it right and then let me click on generate csr so you can see csr creation successful certificate signing request save and let me click on this show pem file so that it will show it up to me okay this is my certificate and let me just copy this one okay and go to my microsoft active directory certificate okay let me go up here and go to this D Cloud Certificates AD1 Certificate Services. Let me close this. 
Oops, I mistakenly closed Express Week Core as well. Let me login again. Okay, I was under the maintenance and then security certificates and the server certificate. I have already downloaded my CSR. I uh, copied that PEM file and now I am going to this ED and now I'm going to request a certificate. Okay. Submit an advanced one and I'm going to paste the whole certificate file which I copied here. And now certificate template would be the client server and let me click on submit. So as soon as I submit it, you can see it says certificate you requested was issued to you. Okay, I will check base, C6, base 64 in Corridor and let me download the certificate. Okay, let me save as, let me say Expressway Core Certificate. Okay, now my trusted certificate is there. And now let me go to this one and click on this browse upload the certificate which i just downloaded it expressway c certificate and open it and then i can upload server certificate data oops okay let me log relog back in Okay, now let me log in back on my core. Okay, so under the maintenance security certificates, under the CA certificate, that one was uploaded, right? That's why now it says there is no certificate signing request is in progress. Now my next step would be to go to this security certificate and add the trusted CA certificate. Okay, it is coming up already there, but let me show you how we can we can do that. So for that again, you need to re go to this Microsoft AD directory. Let me add a new tab here. D cloud certificates, certificates, and now I need to download a CA certificate. Let me click on that download CA certificate. It is coming current D cloud one and base 64, the same I'm using and download the CA certificate. Okay, it is save. Let me save as. Let me give this name as root CA certificate and save it. Okay, now root CA certificate has been saved. Let me go to my Expressway Core 1, click on browse here, and then go to this root CA certificate, open it, and click on this append CA certificate. Here you are seeing it is saying failed expired certificates or CLs. Now it is saying CA certificate file uploaded. File contains certificates one CRLS zero. Right now my next step would be after uploading or appending these certificates, I need to restart the Expressway Core as well as Expressway Edge. Once I do it on Expressway Edge, I need to do it as well. I need to do restart of that server as well. So let me restart this Expressway core. Let me restart it. And meanwhile, once it is like restarting, I can do the same things on the Expressway edge. So here, this is my Expressway edge. I can go to the maintenance and then I can, I can do the same steps, security certificate, certificate, server certificate. I can generate CSR. Okay, it is saying cannot generate a CSR. You must configure a local host and domain name before you generate. Okay, let me go to this one local host and domain name. As you can see, we did the same things there on the Expressway core, right? So let me just add the domain name or host name here. I can say this is my Expressway Edge and domain name. I can say dcloud.cisco.com 
address would be I believe 192.18.133.2 here and let's just save it. Okay, it says DNS settings have been saved. Now go to maintenance again, security certificates and the sort of a server certificate. Okay, now let me generate the CSR that is certificate signing request and it is saying something. Additional names, unified CM registration names, nothing. You don't need to change anything just with this one, 2048. And depends on the state, locality, you can change it. Okay, now you can see it says uh, generated on today. And then let me show the PEM file. Click, let's copy everything. And then do the same steps which we did on the Expressway core. Let's go to the Microsoft Active Directory. Let me close this one and open a new one. Okay, let me request a certificate. Advanced certificate request, pasted the same thing, did the client server and submit. Now I need to download this certificate. Okay, now it is coming up. Let me save it as a Expressway Edge CER certificate. So now I can see I have I already have Expressway Core Expressway Edge certificates, and for the Expressway Core, I have already uploaded this core as well as root CA. So now for this one, for the Expressway Edge, this root certificate would be same, but this Expressway Edge certificate would be a different, which we already downloaded it. Now let me go back to my Expressway Edge and upload the same Expressway Edge CER, open and upload it. Okay, it is asking for a login again. Let me go to the links. And log in. Okay, go to the maintenance, security certificate, server certificate, which I was uploading it. So now it is saying no certificate signing request in progress. That means it's already uploaded. When I clicked on that upload server certificate data, right? Now my next step would be to upload the trusted CA certificate. I can go to this trusted CA certificate. I don't need to create a new CA certificate, new trusted CA certificate. I can just browse it with the same CA certificate which I used it for the core. Okay, browse it and then I can go to this append CA certificate. Now you can see here my new certificate is coming up CN and matches expiration date. Now also you need to restart this Expressway core as well. Let me restart. And now you can see after restart my Expressway core is already up and let me log in. Okay, so now my certificates are already uploaded now on the core as well as on the edge, right? Expressway core is already restarted. Expressway edge is restarting now. Now let's see our next step. So next step would be to create MRA traversal zones. Okay, let me go back to the slide. Okay, here what we did, we already added the certificate, the server one and the uh, as you can see the server one as well as the CA certificate. Right now you can see the next one would be to add it on a MRA traversal server. Like we need the next, the next and the last configuration that is MRA traversal, right? For that, you need to do the same thing on the core as well as on the edge. As you can see under the slide, we need to repeat the same steps in Express as well. We already did that. Now my last step would be to create the traversal zones. And here you can see, I need to go to the zone and the zones and then I can choose the traversal one. Let me log back on the CUCM, not this, on the Expressway core, not the CUCM. Go to the configuration and then I can go to the zones. Okay, now it is just showing up these zone that is neighbors on a default one. 
I need to create a new zone. And then here I can just say MRA traversal. Just I'm just giving the name. And then under the type, you can see MRA traversal like this one, Unified Communication Traversal. I can click on this one, Unified Communication Traversal. Okay, now it is asking for a username and password, but I don't have any username and password right now. What should I write here now? So for this one, I need to do these things on the Expressway Edge first. So let me log in on my Expressway Edge. Okay, I can go to this configuration, zones, zones. Let me add a new one. Let's say I'm adding this MRA traversal and under the type, the same I'm using unified communication traversal. As you can see, as soon as I click on this one, unified communication traversal, it says connection credentials, username and password. I don't have any, then I can add it. Let's say it is saying here, add or edit local authentication database. I clicked on that, click on new, and then I can just add username and password. I'm just using Cisco Cisco and create credentials. Okay, this is created. This local, local authentication database, this Cisco credential is created now. Okay. So now I can go to like it says port number 7001 TLS verify subject name or all the other things which it is coming up here. As you can see in the authentication, you can choose it as treat as authenticated. Right. And let me save username here as the Cisco which I created. And then you can see uh, all UDP TCP. If you want to change anything here like this one, uh, IC support, multi-stream, SIP poison, then you can, otherwise we can, we can just leave it as default. So, so what that, we did already, we already added this one, this one, everything would be same. Now under the SIP, we have this one TLS verify subject name. That would be our expressway c1.dcloud.cisco.com. So that is our uh, expressway core name, right? And then let me create the zone. The zone is created, unified communication traversal. Now I need to do the same things on the expressway core. I'm adding username here as well as the password here. SIP port number, I need to add it up here. What it is, so it is saying, if the traversal server is expressway edge, this must be the port number that has been configured on the expressway edge traversal server zone associated with this expressway. So that SIP port number was 7001, right? And this must be different from the listening ports which is used for TLS UDP that is 5016, 5061. That is what we were using. Like, let me just show it to you on the expressway edge. Under this MRA traversal, you can see this one was the port number 7001. And then under this one, you can see, or uh, let's just say treat as authenticated. And then you have a PR1 address here. Here, let me add expressway edge one dot dcloud dot cisco dot com and let me create a zone. So now you can see this zone MRA traversal created as well. Correct. And let me go back to my slide and this will finish our configuration for the MRA. As you can see it up here, uh, it's on the expressway edge, treat as authenticated, create it. Then need the same things on the expressway core, zone, MRA traversal, unified communication traversal. You need to select Cisco, Cisco, SIP port number, treat as authenticated, and the expressway edge server under the PR1 address location. So this will complete all the configuration which is needed for the MR. Right? If you have any queries or questions, you can just reach out to me or you can just reach out to me on technicalventure02 at gmail.com. And if you want to schedule some time with me, you can go to this link topmedio slash technicalventure, right? And if you really like it, then please hit like, share it and subscribe it. And 
please press the bell icon so that you can see all the notifications of upcoming videos. Thank you.